A Swiss startup with money behind it, a wealth of expertise on board and its eye on an IPO. All dedicated to the simple task of truly sustainable energy storage for the benefit of people, society, industry and of course the planet. I'm Andrew Wilson and I sat down with CEO Peter Brown to talk about the venture, the energy behind it and the importance of zinc as a recyclable solution. Peter, pleasure to talk to you. Tell us first of all a bit about Fenergy, who you all are and what you've got together to achieve. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Um, Fenergy comes from phenomenal energy and basically we're all entrepreneurs who have built numerous companies, exited numerous companies, IPO'd companies and that's the big difference. We're a very senior team with a vast network of people that we can tap into internationally I think that's, that's very important, a uh, uh, success factor compared to typically young startups where you have very junior people who are just at the beginning of what they're doing. And this network helps in so many um, um, aspects, uh, from funding to uh, reaching the market to the supply chain to have reliable industrial and scientific partners. So that's the big difference. But we're all gathered and collected under one big goal, which is we want to do something for people and planet and what we focus on is sustainable energy storage. Okay, so tell us a bit about the scientific principles behind the projects that you're working on and also uh, why zinc? I read about zinc in your company literature. Yes, well we have uh, of course energy storage, I'm in that field for many many years um, and in principle we know all the elements that exist on the earth and how they react with each other. And today when we talk about batteries, it's typically a lithium battery that we're using. It's an established technology. Um, it's being used from our mobile phones uh, to electrical cars, but it also has some downsides. Um, of course, it needs to be safe and to control its safety, we need a, rel a relatively big um, battery management system, but also um, it is um, uh, mined in only a few uh, countries and typically these raw materials are controlled by a few people and we know what geopolitical dependency means. Um, zinc is available in over 50 countries in the world and being mined there. So basically when we probably drill here, we might hit zinc, right? Uh, and of course, if we look at more sustainable things, it goes not just about the raw materials, but also where is it produced and where is it shipped to? We today ship most of the batteries still have around the globe, while we are now building up a manufacturing plant for lithium. But um, we need an alternative. And zinc is a material that is um, um, eligible to also being changed. Uh, normally a zinc battery only functions one time. But the, the big trend is going into, and this is where the science kicks in, um, to modify material on a nano level or atomic level where you in ingredient um, certain, certain things and that help you to change the behavior on a nano level. So when we look at our batteries, we typically have a three, a three million magnific uh, magnification to understand what's really happening there, right? And uh, so that's, that's the science behind and that's what we're looking at. And with that we have accomplished a product um, that is now being ready to be mass produced, marketed and solve a lot of the issues when it comes to non-hazardous goods, non-explosive batteries. When you fly, you're being reminded, oh, when your battery changes, gets heat or so, tell the crew. With us, it's not a problem. Our batteries cannot explode, they cannot burn. Uh, based on the construction we chose. Okay, tell us about the, specifically about the products then. Yeah, we brought a sample here. It's basically uh, we're now in the in the situation that we can mass produce uh, these uh, blue, I call them always bricks, batteries, and that uh, amounts to 20 megawatt per month our production cap capability. It's been totally under the radar. No one knows about us yet, so it's uh, one of the first interviews I'm ready to give. And in only three years we have been able to um, create 38 patents 
uh, around our technology in a couple of patent families. And of course, we continue to innovate. But this is solving a lot of problems when it comes to non-hazardous goods, transport of batteries, installation in critical environments, for example, within plants or in uh, forklift trucks or other situations where you want alternatives. So that's on a larger scale, mostly kind of electrically driven vehicles, things like that. Do you have smaller ones as well? Uh, we look into light electric vehicles as well. We can build that basically in different uh, scale formats. We also created like an AA cell uh, based on that same technology, right? And that could be used, for example, uh, for e-bikes or other situations. The problem with um, lithium is that it's uh, a limited resource in this planet and the demand for energy storage is exploding, right? virtually, which is of course good for us, the timing is perfect, but also the supply of what we have today is not going to be um, sufficient over the next decades. Well, this brings me back to what you were saying about your team at the beginning, that you're all experienced, you're not on your first day out, you've done something similar before, and presumably in different fields. Talk to me about what the team at Fenergy brings to the game. Uh, that's a very good question. Most people that we have been able to collect together have been building up their own companies. They have exited own companies. They also served in big industrial conglomerates. So they have both the experience of what it means to be a hands-on entrepreneur and to work and deal with big uh, corporates. And you have to have the knowledge of both because we, little Fanogy, uh, as innovative as we are, we will not change the world, which is our ambition, to change the industry unless we partner up with basically everyone who's involved in that. And how do you get access? How do you talk to people that are running multi-billion dollars, multi-billion dollars um, conglomerates? How do you make sure they take you serious? And it starts from a board level. It goes down through access to funding. It's also very much about how credible are we when we claim to be sustainable. How do we measure our KPIs? How do we, you know, are believed to telling the truth? And we're at the beginning of that journey where there is no such system out there yet to really fairly measure. It's the whole scene is in big development and the demand from capital to be more impactful when they choose an investment, that is, that is very, very important. And um, we try to comply with it and in parts to even lead that movement where we say, okay, this is what we need to focus on if we want to be fair, and we call it triple P. So it's whenever we measure up our uh, impact, it's for people, for the planet, and of course we have to be profitable. We want to make uh, money for our investors, but not at the expense of the planet or exploiting other people. So perhaps you have a small blueprint for that in Fenergy, bringing in the different skills, the science and the marketplace and the investment strategies. What's your vision, final thought, Peter? What's your vision for the planet and our energy needs going forwards? I'm an eternal optimist, right? So you could be disillusioned by what is happening and still happening. We, we seem to fall back hundreds of years if you look at military conflicts being played out today. and, and uh, the generation that is fighting for a more sustainable future being widely ignored. And uh, I think for me personally, we have to keep innovating and uh, we have to keep um, working more collaboratively. And that of course has to do with not moral questions, but what are our values? You know, how many Lamborghinis or Rolls Royces or whatever do I have to drive? Uh, it's not a solution for the planet. So we have to understand what is real luxury, and that's probably clean air, or being able to go to a forest uh, and not necessarily, you know, the world coming together here in Davos where we current, currently are. If we find better solutions, that's all worth it. And I think this is what the next generation has to do. So whoever is interested in helping us, helping Fenergy to, you know, support with being a great scientist or being a family office or wanting to put their resources, whatever it might be, 
into a positive game, then please just write to me or call me. Peter, thanks very much indeed. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.